Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Raz Plays review. Today I just got my Serapad kin from Lethal Gaming Gear, and the reason I waited so long to pick up this pad is because I was waiting for them to drop the special edition colorways. So TJX or TJ Exclusives, the people who make the Serapad kin, just released a pad in pink, blue, and my favorite, lime green. Of course, being my favorite color, you know I had to pick up the green pad. They come in a few different sizes, and today we'll be looking at the largest size, which is called Osmium. Since the Sarah pad is a hard pad that competes directly with the Sky pad, all the comparisons I make in this video will be between the Sarah pad Ken and the Sky pad 3.0 XL that I have. Also, I want to mention that I've never personally tried the original Sarah pad, so I won't be able to make any comments or references between the original and the Sarah pad Ken. If you enjoy my video or it helps you make a decision on which pad is right for you, I ask that you please like and subscribe as it helps me a ton in getting my content out there. Also, I'm still doing my giveaway of the X and 2 WE and that's gonna happen once I hit a thousand subscribers so the faster that I reach my goal the faster that this will be in one of your guys's hands all right with all that said let's go ahead and get the kin out of the box and on the desk So the first thing I'd like to mention is that the box that the can came in is nowhere near the quality of the box that the Skypad came in. The Skypad came in an outer cardboard box, but the Skypad itself was in a nice black collector's box with a brushed finish. Inside there's foam perfectly fitted to the Skypad. The Serapad on the other hand came in a sort of generic box with bubble wrap around it. I guess TJX expects you to absolutely love the Serapad and it's gonna sit on your desk forever, so why spend so much on a box when you're not gonna put it back in the box. All jokes aside though, it would have been nice to see the Serapad come in a collector's box. Although I kind of understand it would have been difficult to make a different size box for all the different sizes that the Serapad can come in. When you compare it to the Skypad that only has two different sizes. But once you get it out of the box and on your desk, you realize, man, it is a beauty. The green on this thing just absolutely pops and it's a perfect green in my opinion. I will admit there are some tiny inconsistencies in the color, but they're so minuscule that it's really not an issue. Also, you're gonna realize just how big the size of this thing is. The Skypad 3.0 XL comes in at 400 by 500 millimeters, where the Serapad comes in at 405 by 605 millimeters. It's got more than enough side to side room for any sensitivity. Although it's only 5 millimeters taller than the Skypad, when I put them on top of each other like this, it seems more than 5 millimeters, which is very nice. There is a price premium for the size, however. The Osmium starts at $146.99. And yes, it can get more expensive than that, and I'll explain that later. But the Skypad 3.0 XL is only $119. Now, the most important thing about any mouse pad is, of course, the glide. And here, the Serapad definitely does not disappoint. After I originally I originally tried the Skypad, I didn't think I'd find anything smoother. But the Serapad is like gliding on pure marble. The Serapad is also made of glass just like the Skypad, but unlike the Skypad, the Serapad has a special ceramic coating on the glass that gives it this super smooth glide. In contrast, the Skypad surface is made of pure tempered glass that has a sandpaper-like finish. Like I stated before in my Skypad review video, this finish on the Skypad is pretty rough on my feet. It even prevents you from using glass feet on the Skypad because the skates themselves and the pad will scratch each other up. But on the Serapad, the surface is extremely smooth and silky. As long as it's clean, it provides the best glide that I've ever felt, which I never thought I'd say after trying the Skypad. And because the surface isn't glass and it isn't a matte finish like the Skypad, you can actually use glass feet on the Serapad. The experience with glass feet on the Serapad is extremely fast and almost uncontrollable. If you play Fortnite and you want the absolute fastest experience, then this is it. But there is one 
one huge downside. So I tested two different mice with glass skates and they both have sensor issues. I believe because the glass skates cause the sensor to sit too high off the pad and the sensor starts to lose tracking. The mice I tested were the G Pro Superlight and the Starlight Pro from Vinyl Mouse. Both of these mice do not have an adjustable liftoff distance, but my guess is if you use a mouse that has an adjustable LOD, you can increase the sensor tracking distance to compensate for the extra thickness of the glass feet, so hopefully that won't be an issue. But when using regular PTFE mice feet, I noticed that the glide on the pad did vary widely depending on the mouse feet that you use. For instance, on the new XM2WE, it has very large, wide pads and they felt very marbly on the Serapad surface, even faster than it felt on the Skypad. While on something like the Starlight Pro, the stock PTF feet felt very sticky and grabby. I've seen in some other reviews that if the feet feel sticky and grabby at first, it can ease up over time and with some use, the feet will become faster. Of course, this is something I'll have to test in a long-term review and update you guys later. But when comparing apples to apples, the Serapad does feel a little faster to me than the Skypad. The Serapad Kin is supposed to have more control than the original Serapad, but like I said before, I haven't tried the original. To me though, the Kin does provide more control than the Skypad, but contrarily has more speed than the Skypad when you're actually making swipes. As you can see here, the Serapad does seem to require a little more initial friction than the Skypad, as it needs more of an angle to get the mouse moving. But when the mouse is moving, the Serapad feels slightly faster than the Skypad. It's so close, it's hard to tell which one's faster mid-swipe. But when you do finally come to a stop, the Serapad provides a lot more stopping power and friction than the Skypad does, despite it being smoother than the Skypad. Both of these pads though have one major issue. Everything I just said about the glide on both of these pads is only true if you use some sort of arm sleeve. Personally, I play with a glove and an arm sleeve, but if you don't, you're gonna have a really hard time with sweat and moisture. If you sweat a lot while you game, you're gonna find that these pads love to stick to you like glue. Well, yes, TJX did update the Serapad Kin to be less sticky on skin than the original Serapad. Both pads, in my opinion, are still prone to this issue. If you're a robot and you don't sweat whatsoever, then sure, your dry forearm does slide on these pretty well. Probably better so on the Serapad Kin than the Skypad. But regardless, I still highly recommend getting an arm sleeve if you're going to be using these pads. Somehow, the Serapad is a little less sticky on skin, despite it still having better stopping power. Doesn't really make sense, but all these factors add up to make the Serapad Ken my favorite surface to play on. It's fast, smooth, and still has so much stopping power. When I'm swiping on the Skypad, there is still a lot of scratchiness, no matter what mice feed I use or how clean I get the Skypad. And after using the Skypad for just a few minutes, you have tons of scratches on your mouse feed. On the Serapad, however, that isn't an issue and it doesn't tear up your mouse feed. Speaking of tearing up mice feed, after some use, I noticed on the Skypad, there were like these little white specks forming on the surface. I talked about this in my previous Skypad video and I mentioned how it was actually the PTFE material of your mice feet building up on the surface of the pad. So far this doesn't seem to be an issue on the Sarah pad but again that's something I will have to keep track of and update you guys in a future video. Which brings me to my next point, durability. The Sarah pad Kin and the Skypad have a huge difference in the way they display color. The Skypad's color is printed on a back with a laminate sheet and the color shines through the glass. We're on the Serapad, the color is in the surface coating itself, not the back. This makes the Skypad color a little washed out since it has to travel through the glass to get to the surface, whereas the color on the Serapad can it absolutely pops. The thing that worries me is while yes you can use glass feet on the Serapad, I have concerns that you might scratch up the surface and mess up the color of the pad. If you play Fortnite like me, you know that you pick up your mouse a lot and readjust it constantly while you're building and editing. Repeatedly picking up and slamming your mouse down on the surface might slowly wear down the color of the Serapad, especially if you're using glass feet. I know ceramic is one of the hardest materials on earth, so my hope is that it will hold up. But of course, this is something else that I'll have to update you guys in a future video on. The Skypad surface is pure tempered glass, so I'm never worried about the durability or if it's gonna chip or anything like that, as long as you're not using glass feet on it. On the back of the pads, TJX decided to apply a fake carbon fiber skin, which looks really nice in my opinion. While on the Skypad, it's just a white laminate back. 
The rubber feet on the Sarah pad are much larger than the Sky pad and they provide way more grip. I have these pads on my full desk mat, which is a giant cloth pad, and the Sarah pad does not budge. It even causes my entire desk mat to move. While on the Sky pad, it will wiggle around to your heart's content and it doesn't really stick down onto the surface. In game, this isn't really an issue, but something to note. Also, since these pads use rubber feet, there are people who have a concern about the middle of the pad flexing. So yes, the middle of the pad is slightly raised up and if you push directly in the middle of the pad, you can get them to flex. But this is another thing that you will never notice in game or while playing due to how much force you need to get it to flex. That isn't a force that you'd be using in the game. So the last thing I want to talk about is customization. Earlier, I mentioned that the Sarah pad can get more expensive than just its starting price. That is because if you decide to order directly from TJ Exclusives, you can pay $25 extra to have your name engraved in whatever style you want right here where the original logo would be. So you might be asking, Raz, why the heck didn't you get Raz Plays engraved there? Well, it's a long story, but I ordered this pad from Lethal Gaming Gear. If you haven't heard of them, they're a pretty big online retailer who sells gaming peripherals. They were resellers for the Sarah Pad can and they launched it early by accident. But FOMO kicked in for me and I ordered the pad as soon as I possibly could. However, since they mistakenly launched it, they retracted the launch and they didn't ship out the pads till the following Monday. Well, that following Monday is when TJX actually launched the pad on their own website. That's when they allowed you to customize your pad with the engravings. My original plan was to order from TJX anyway and get my name engraved, so I knew I needed to return this pad to Lethal Gaming Gear. I got in contact with Lethal Gaming and on their support team helped me out. They were happy to return the pad and even let me get a sneak peek of it before I returned it. After that experience, I highly recommend Lethal Gaming Gear. Their support is awesome and that's something that is very rare to see these days. When I do my long-term update, you guys will get to see my custom pad and what the engraving looks like. But if you guys wanna check that out early, make sure to follow my Twitter. I'll leave a link in the description. I post pictures on there so you guys can get early glimpses of my upcoming videos. So be sure to check that out. With all that said, the stock T TJX logo on the Sarah Pad can does look pretty good in my opinion, and it saves you the extra 25 bucks of getting your name engraved. However, if you are a neat freak like me, I will say the logo has some tiny imperfections. Of course, nothing that affects the use of the pad, just a minor inconvenience, but something to note since the pad is $150. So overall, if I was forced to choose between the two pads, which don't get me wrong, they're both amazing pads, but I'm gonna have to go with the Sarah Pad. I love its larger size, the way the color just pops, the speed that you get while still having so much stopping power and the fact that you can get it customized and have your name on it. Of course with the extra size and the customization you're gonna be paying 170 plus dollars for the Sarah pad whereas the sky pad is only hundred and nineteen dollars. But to me you get what you pay for. If you're trying to save a little money and you want a good hard pad of course go with the sky pad but if you really want the ultimate gaming pad that's gonna last you forever has more than enough size and is customized to you then go with the Sarah pad. And that pretty much wraps up the video if you guys enjoyed please hit the like button and let me know down in the comments what kind of pads you guys use do you prefer cloth pads or hard pads and maybe leave me some recommendations i like control pads myself so let me know what i should try out next make sure you subscribe for that long-term update video on this sarah pad and thank you so much for watching have a great day